whistleblower. Brett. David Spunk at the Department of Justice. David, thank you. Let's hear more about why the whistleblower's name should be out there. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul joins us on set tonight. Senator, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I referenced that tweet a uh, moment ago, Andrew uh, Bakaj, the whistleblower's attorney. If Congress and others do not protect my client's anonymity, which my client is afforded by the law, not only does it jeopardize their safety, but it jeopardizes an entire system that took decades to build. It will destroy effective congressional oversight for years to come. Your response to that? You know, I don't wish harm on anyone. I've been the victim of political violence not once but twice. I was there at the ball field when Steve Scalise was almost killed. A staff member was 10 feet from me who was shot. I had six of my ribs broken by a hater of uh, President Trump, so I know what political violence is all about. I don't want that at all. But the report was un, un, not correct in the sense that the statute says the inspector general can't reveal the name. It says the president should enforce the law, but the person you quoted uh, was uh, disingenuous in what they were saying. The statute says the inspector general can't reveal the name. There's nothing that prevents me from saying it now other than that I want it to be more about the process and less about the person. But there's no law that prevents me from mentioning the name of who's been said to be the whistleblower. But there's but you're also. you know? Yeah. And there's something important also. It's called the Constitution. The Sixth Amendment to the Constitution says if you are going to accuse me of a crime, I get to stare you down in court. That is absolutely part of the Constitution. The statute might say one thing, but I promise you, if there is a trial, you always get to confront your accuser. It's in the Sixth Amendment, it's in the Bill of Rights. There's no way they can stop well, the defense from asking. Well, I don't that. understand what prevents you from getting on the Senate floor where you're protected on all kinds of things and just giving a speech and saying what the guy's name is right. if you're convinced I, you know who it yeah, is. No, I can and I may, but I can do it right now if I want. Nothing stops me. There's no law that stops me from doing it. Other than that, I don't want to make it about the one individual. But I would say this. I do think that this individual is a material witness to the potential Biden corruption. He was there under Joe Biden. He was there when Joe Biden was trying to fire the prosecutor that was, in, that was uh, investigating Hunter Biden. So this person was a Ukrainian expert on the desk at that time. I think he should be interviewed not as the whistleblower, but as a material witness to the Biden corruption in Ukraine. Okay, but critics would say that you're pointing to the process of how you got there. But now we are where we are. Today, you have former ambassador or current ambassador uh, Gordon Sundland uh, with his, the transcript that's released has changed the testimony that essentially right. he says there was quid pro quo as far as military aid being withheld. You're talking about the process, how we got here rather than the substance where sort we of, are. Sort of, but I'm actually talking about another subject. I think the whistleblower is a material witness to the Biden corruption because he was there when the Biden corruption scandal was going on. There are reports that there are aides to Joe Biden who counseled that it was a conflict of interest for his son to be making so much money. That should be investigated, and the whistleblower was there at the time. If the whistleblower is now talking about President Trump, what did the whistleblower think at the time, and what did he write and say to Joe Biden about the conflict of interest with Hunter Biden? He needs to be interviewed for that purpose alone, but also the president's defense, because of the Sixth Amendment to the Constitution, will get to confront him. No judge will turn that down. He will, if he wants to, get to confront his accuser. I understand. But to my question, what about the substance of where we are now? Do you have any problem with what you've read, heard about the phone <laughs> call, the fallout to it, and the surrounding? I, I guess the only thing that I've discovered after looking at both sides on this is that everybody seems to want to influence the aid to Ukraine. Biden said, we'll cut it off if you don't fire this prosecutor. Menendez said, if you don't keep investigating Trump, we'll cut your aid. Murphy was there a month ago, and he says, if you investigate Hunter Biden, we'll get rid of your aid. It seems like everybody on both sides of the aisle has been threatening Ukrainian aid. And if I'd have been on the phone, I'd said you don't get any because we don't have any money. We got to borrow it from China to send it to Ukraine. What about this concern that protecting whistleblowers overall, if you name this person, right. suddenly jeopardizes other things? Let's go back to 2014. Campaign for Liberty, <clears throat> founded by your dad. Um, you say this. We've got so many millions of government contractors that when they see something wrong, they should be able to report it without repercussions. Your dad, Ron Paul, Absolutely. says, I think we should praise our whistleblowers. Ron Paul said to applause, adding people like Edward Snowden should be rewarded. Absolutely. So if I those statements are true, why are you doing what you're doing well, now? I agree completely with it, but we were defending Edward Snowden, who I still defend, and I think he should have gotten whistleblower status. Most of the people defending the current whistleblower wanted to lock up Edward Snowden and, and hang him or execute him. So 
So yes, the whistleblower statute should protect people. Only the from, whistleblowers no, that no, you no. like? No, they should protect him. I want Edward Snowden protected so he's not executed. I want him protected. What about this guy? I don't want him executed either. I don't think he should be fired, but I agree with what Lindsey Graham said in your lead-in, and that is that it's a protection from being fired. It's not a protection to be anonymous, particularly if it's going to be a criminal case. Once you have a crime, there is a constitutional protection that you have to confront your accuser. There are no exceptions to that. No court in the land will let there be a trial of President Trump without him confronting his accusers. So I still am for an expansive whistleblower protection. You shouldn't be fired. And this person shouldn't be persecuted or put in jail, but he should come forward like Edward Snowden did, reveal himself and say what he think government did wrong. I just want to be clear. You agree with Lindsey Graham on something? <laughs> yes. Okay. It doesn't happen, you know, every day of the week. Okay. Yeah. Finally, where do you think this goes?